Hey kids, welcome back to Enter the Atmosphere. We got a great show for you this week. We're gonna break down the mastering template that I use on a daily basis um, to mix over 3,000 songs with. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it from the top to the bottom, and then I'll, I'll show you where you can download the, the software and check it out for yourself. But um, we're gonna use, ironically, we're gonna use the very first song that I used the template on about three or four years ago from a band called the Hollywood Undead. They rule, the name of the song's called Chaos. We're gonna use that as our example to show you how I, I master in Dolby Atmos. So hang in there, we're coming at you. All right, welcome back. Before we get going, I got a few things to shout out to my sponsors. We got Odyssey, we got Triad Orbit, we got Vintage King, Sweetwater, Fab Filter, last but not least, Voral Motors. Appreciate what you guys do for us, couldn't do it without you. So, first let's go through a little bit of Nashville's latest music news. All right, this week, Lenny Wilson and Jelly Roll kick major tail at the CMAs. Go team. Woohoo! Pretty awesome. So, I also found out that Jelly and Lenny are both nominated for Grammys um, in the coming Grammy show up in, in uh, January. So, Lenny's up for uh, Album of the Year, which I mixed in Dolby Atmos, uh, Bell Bottom Country. And um, uh, Jelly's up for uh, Artist of the Year. So, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so, all right, let's get at this thing. Let's first off, let's talk about what we're going to do. I'm going to show you exactly how I master in Dolby Atmos. I get a lot of questions about that all the time. People want to know, man, how do you do that? And, and there's there's pieces of software that, that you can get. There's things that Dolby supplies that does it. Um, and it's okay. And then there's some things that um, some other outside third-party plugins do that, that, that works too. But I found after 3,000 plus mixes, this is the way that works best for me. And hopefully it'll work for you too. So I'm going to show you exactly what I do. All right, let's go to Pro Tools and let's uh, let's get after it. Here we go. All right. So this is the session that I did on the Hollywood Undead. Now, if you look, if you've seen my template enough to know, this looks a little bit different. That's because it's three years old, and by gosh, we make changes. <laughs> Within three years, it's it's changed a lot. So I'll scoot down here a little bit so I can, you can see better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play just a little touch of it so you get the taste of what it's all about. And then um, we're gonna start the process. So this is not my mastering template, this is my mix template. And I'm gonna print an ADM and show you exactly what we do after that point. So here we go. Here's just a little taste. Lots of fun. I had to play a little bit more than I normally play, but where do you stop on this thing? It's cool. So, okay. So you're mixing along, and this is your mix, and you're happy with your mix. And let me tell you how I mix. 
I do it a little different than everybody else, but everybody does it different. So this is just the way I do it. When I'm mixing a song in Dolby Atmos, I'm mixing it for the room. I'm going to mix it where the room sounds kicking. I get the room sound and it's great. I don't care if I'm banging 18 LKFS. I don't care if I'm bringing negative four. It doesn't matter to me as long as it sounds good in the room. That is my pre-master. I'm trying to get everything as tight as I possibly can and get it rocking. Once that's done, then I'm going to print this, and this is going to be known from here on out as my pre-master. So simple process. This is my two mix down here at the bottom um, that I've had for making sure the links are right and everything is exactly the same. So I pull this in, and I go over to bounce the mix. I'm going to show you how I name things, and this is... I'd say 90% of the record labels in town here in Nashville, LA, and New York, this is kind of what they want. They want the name of the artist first, underscore the name of the song, and then I always put, um, usually my initials right here um, on this one where I'm going to put something different because I don't want it to wind up in a file. I don't know where it's at. So um, I would normally just put JH and then Atmos Mix, capital A, capital M, and then BIMD for binaural metadata. So then after that, we're gonna put this ETA tester. Now we're gonna choose where we're gonna put it. We're gonna go to this ATM drive here. I'm gonna make a new folder. This is called Premaster. And I can't stress enough how important it is to stay organized when you're doing this stuff. If you don't, you know, you get four or five things going on at once and you will be totally in the weeds and lost and looking, you'll be looking for stuff faster than you'll be doing it. So important to name all your folders. Okay, so we're gonna bounce this bad boy. Shouldn't take too long. I'll speed up the process here and cut to it at the end here when it's done. All right, just about there. Okay, done. All right, so we've got our pre-master, it's done, it's finished. So we go and we save our work here. I'm not going to because this has already been done. First things first is we're going to create a brand new session from scratch. And we're just, we're going to call this, if I was doing this for a label, I would name it just like I did the others, Hollywood Undead, underscore chaos, underscore JH, underscore Atmos with a capital A, mix with a capital M, underscore BIMD, and then underscore whatever this is, which would be mastering. So we'll call it mastering. So chaos mastering. 2448 and we are ready okay so i've created a session here in um pro tools blank nothing in it okay the way i load this in i don't use it like a traditional template like because i've there's a lot of reasons why it could take me hours and hours to explain why i don't do that but it's all about organizing those folders at the end so that you keep an organized system going so it's easy when you're mastering and that's important because when you get into mastering, if, if, if you get hit with a proverbial, hey man, could you turn the bass up one dB or can you turn the vocal up or blah, blah, blah. And if you're not in this format, the way I'm doing it, you have to go all the way back pre ADM and do it again. And that's a pain in the butt. So this way here, you always have control. You always have the ability to fix anything that the producer asked for. You have total control from start to finish. So, all right. Empty slate. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to import, and we're going to import session data, okay? And we're going to go right up here to where we put our little pre-master. Hollywood dead, ETA tester that I spelled wrong. Okay. We're going to open that bad boy. Boom. Now, this is going to pop up the screen right here, and you want to just make sure you go from the top... Hold shift, click to the bottom, make all brand new tracks with everything that just came in. in. Beds and objects assignments, object pan data assign, import replaces existing playlists because there's nothing in here. So you want to do it just like that. Hit OK. It's going to give you that link indirectly, blah, blah, blah. Just never mind that. Okay. Okay. Obviously, we didn't use all of these particular ones. We're not going to worry about that right now. Okay. Here's what we got show you right now okay this first track number zero zero one right above my head right here that is your bed that's been printed through the adm okay and then where it says fab verb on to the right those are all objects you can see the orange object buttons all the way down and that's everything that we did first order of business you've loaded this into a new session okay you're going to hit the the bed 
you're going to right click and you're going to roll down here to where it says split into mono okay all this is super important everything you got to do exactly right you split them all into mono now you come back over to the bed and you hide and make it inactive you don't need it okay so now you get your your beds all filleted out into mono and now you're ready to import the template. So you come to import, you want to match tracks, okay? So it matches everything that you're using. And then you want to add key one, two, and three, and the LTC. And you hit okay. And then all you do have to do is say do it. <laughs> it's very important. It's gonna tell you you've done this to the bed and you say new. No. Bingo. Now, you with me so far? I hope so. It's I know it's a little complicated, but now we've imported my template on top of the ADM BWF pre-master, okay? So now what we're going to do, this part is um, how the whole enchilada works. We want to come in here, highlight from top to bottom, make sure we can see everything. And you'll notice there's some groups I've set up over here. There's a, there's a drum bed and an all master. Um, and it's different than the all, all master. Okay. So you look up here. I've got key one, key two, key three. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these off. This one, drum bed and all master. They're going to be on when you first launch it. Turn that off. Turn that off. Now you're going to come over here to key one. Before you do anything, you want to turn this key and take it up to a bed and just take it down to the first available I use it to stick it right there, okay? reason you're doing this is if you don't, you're going to create a feedback loop, and the feedback loop will absolutely, I don't care what kind of Mac you can, I'm just going to trash it, and you have to reboot. So that's the only thing you got to remember to do is put it on this, hit your mute button, and hit the record button. Now, what's this doing? Let me show you what it's doing. You see right here where it says mono print, this one right here, okay? That's copied all the way down through, all the way through there. And all that does, it takes all your information and it sends it to here, okay? Now what we're doing is we're fixing to print a mono print of the entire mix. And we're going to use that mono print to feed all of our different sources like EQ or compressor or limiter and whatever else we have in the chain. That way, this mono mix is feeding the chain and causing the whole thing to move in Congress like it would in a two-mix situation. So um, it works amazing, and it, first time you do it, you'll freak out because it sounds really good. So now, before we can make that all work, we have to record the mono version. So I've got sends coming off all these channels headed down there. You just hit three and let it do its thing. As soon as it's done, I'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. All right, sweet. All right, so we got that recorded. Now, we go in reverse of what we just did. We're going to take it out of record, take off the mute, put this back to where it was, which was key number one right here. Okay, now, this is going to a key that is set up on the EQ, and then the next key is going to be set up on the compressor. Next key Q is going to be set up on the limiter as their key input. So that's what's going to drive them. That's how this all works. So what we're going to do next is copy this, paste it down here. Now we've got three little keys going to our, our goods. So turn back on all master, turn on the drum bed. Now come up here and I use fab filter on everything. They're clean. Doesn't eat your CPU up. Um, you got your zero latency setting on this one and that that's seems to work the best um, and it just, they sound amazing they, you can do incredible stuff with this stuff so anyways so you're, you're playing your song let's go here and pop it we'll be somewhere around in here and uh, we're not going to get into the details of how you master but it's, it's just like mastering in the stereo except for you got more speakers so but. All right, so I'm adding EQ now, and it's affecting every channel. So if I put this like this, and I look down here, see? Every one, okay? That's no big deal. That's normal business. Okay, so we got that. 
let's go to the next one. Now you got your compressor. Now look right here where it says no key. That's because that's on the key track. And you just want this to feed the key and then the key to feed the, the, the whatever instruments or whatever tracks you got down the line. So here is Pro C2. And if you look now, it's being fed by key two right here. There we go. I hit it. Cool. Set my threshold. Damn the rate up a little bit. Ratio up a little bit. It's a little hot coming in. I can turn it down. We have the track a little hot to begin with. Set your attack. Set your release. How you want it. I do a little side chaining inside of here too as well. Um, I. I roll off around 80 where I'd have the compressor not hitting the low end especially in hip hop and stuff like that you don't want to, you don't want to smash it too hard down there let it breathe and that doesn't make the track pump if you don't if you don't do this so so now same thing on the top this one's got you know pretty sweet little top end so we're going to make sure we we don't jack that up so then I'm coming over here to um the compressor and if you look these settings that I made are all the way down the line okay and what's really cool is when you hit play watch this you see right underneath here look at them isn't that pretty they're all moving all moving in progress together doing their thing okay so now if you've noticed if I was mastering this, that would be my second thing I'd do. And then I'd probably jack with the limiter a little bit. Same thing. It's being fed by key number three. Set so that, adjust that, do your thing. Okay, once I get that all sounded good, I'm still in the room. I'm still listening in the room, and I'm mastering music in the, in the room through speakers, like you do when you're mixing two mix, okay? Everybody starts wanting to change the way they work and start using headphones too early. And some guys go back and forth. If that's what you normally do, that's what you normally do. Do it. Uh, me, I, I like to check those kind of as I'm getting closer to the end because I trust my room and I mixed a lot of songs in here. So I know my room really well. Also, when it comes time for headphones, I strongly, 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 strongly recommend the Odyssey MM500s. These things are the, the Manny Maraquin uh, versions. They're flat. They sound amazing, and what you hear is what you get, and that that's pretty much your your lifeline <laughs> as an engineer. Um, you got to trust those because that's what your consumers are going to be listening on headphones, anyways. Um, so that's the next step. So you get all this, you get all this rocket. Here's the beauty of this whole system. So let's just say you get back in, and the producer says, "I love the way it sounds, but it sounds like I need a little bit more compression on." whatever it might be maybe it's the lead singer well because of the way i've numbered this and i know where the objects are and then which beds and everything you know this is once you play with this you'll see how easy it is i can come right in here and i know that my lead vocal is going to be right here okay and i, I know exactly what's going to be in every single object and where it's going to be and i can go in here and I, let's just say i want to turn off the compressor on just one thing, but keep everything else the same. Um, I know that's part of more of mixing, but sometimes it happens when you're at the end, you know, you, you get a little too much here and you have to make compromises in your two mix. You have to turn it down a little bit because it's affecting the vocal too much. Well, heck, so all you do is you just turn off all master once you've made all your major settings and everything, and then change that particular one. Let's just say you want to turn it, the threshold down just a little bit on that one. Well, if you go to that particular one, then you go check a different one down the way. Look, it didn't affect that one. It only affected that one. And once you're done, put it back in all master. Now, if you touch something from this point, it's going to change everything back. So you got to just be cognizant of where you're at in, the, in, the, in your workflow. So then you come to, um, you know, you get it all like you like it, and then everything's groovy. Now is the time that you come over here to Mr. Renderer. Okay, so you got to sound great. It's been playing in the background. You can see I'm at 16.7. I'm a little bit hot. Not too bad. Not too far off. Now let's go over here to our binaural render mode. Now I know you can put the plug-in on, but I like to do it like this. I use two computers. I run this on a different computer. 
And um, this is just kind of the way I like to roll. So I purposely had these just set to mid so that you could see what I'm doing. So I go through. I like to keep my, my, my LRC. I, I usually put that on near on each one. Um, I usually turn these to mid. And then from here to here, which is the tops, I'll put those on far. Okay. Now, on 11 through the fab verb here, I've, I'm not using it on this song, but if I was using it on this song, I'd set these two to near, these two to mid, and these two to far. And that's because it's a verb that's set to swell across the room, and I, I know how to use it. 17, 18, okay, I know that's my bass guitar because that's where I always put it. I put it the same place every time. Um, and I'm going to put that on near, or I'm going to put it on off. Sometimes the track hits harder at off. This particular one, I'd probably listen to it and off on the bass. Okay, and then this is just more effects and I'm not using on this song. Now we get down here to our the, the money, which is the vocal, which is going to be 33. And I'm going to put 33, 34. That's my lead vocal. I'm going to put that at near. Um, that way, if, if you ever get a situation where you're listening to a mix and atmos and it sounds kind of hollow or sounds like there's too much dang reverb and yeah mad any reverb well there's your huckleberry every single time you've probably got it set on mid or far on the lead vocal and it sounds like it's a big wash mess so fix that go through every single one of these take your time with this try all three try near mid far on every single thing until you get a feel for for what you do and and you know how it's going to go so th that's just critical when you're making an atmos mix and especially with the template the way it's set up so okay so once you get that all done and you get it sounding amazing in the headphones and you, you it's money it's you're good to go you hit your accept okay now we're going to come back to the mix and now we know we were clicking at 16 what we're we clicking 16.7 okay so that right there is 1.3 above 18 lkfs okay here's now the template is set up to handle that. So you're in drum bed and all master. You come over here to the, the final trim, which is right here. You click on that and you take it down 1.3. So when you get down to those little small increments, if you hit the command key and hold it down while you're moving this, it lets you move it in smaller increments. It's a good little trick. Um, if you don't, it jumps a little fast. So then if you look, boom. You're 1.3 all the way down and you haven't affected you haven't touched these meters here and that's where i'll leave it i'll print it from there sometimes if i want the drums to be a little bit brighter i love this little plug in it doesn't take up a lot of room it's mr greg wells it's called mix centric and um you just it gives it a little brightness a little bit more pump to the drums didn't need it on this one but if i if it, you know if i hit it it pops on on all these and we're ready to go so just, you can put anything you want in there and you can experiment with these plugins. You can add more every time you add something that is dynamic, that needs to be controlled with a key. You need to add another key. So, and then to set it up the same way and in, in order and call it key number four, key number five, so forth and so on. So hopefully that's not too terribly complicated. Now you got it ready to go. Now you got just one last thing you want to do. And this is fairly new. Um, I know Universal is it's kind of on their deliverable demands now. So if you don't do this, you'll get a little spanking. So don't do that. So, okay, so if you look through here, okay, under my fab verb, like I was saying earlier, take these off so you don't screw nothing up. I'm not, there's nothing going to those tracks, okay? So that's just wasted space. So what I'm going to do is come up here and get all the ones that are wasted. Those, hide and make it active. Okay, now I already clipped this in the beginning because I had my two mix in there to make it, you know, where I could make sure it was the exact same length. We know that I just set it to 18 LKFS. You're cooking with gas, man. It's all, that's it. All you got to do now is go up to bounce the mix, name it properly like I told you how to do it, and that's it. If you have to print a, um, a high-res bin, if, if, if you got clients coming in to listen to it in here, then you can listen to it in here. You don't have to worry about it, but... A lot of guys are printing high-res bins now, so you just configure that. Um, and the way you do that is hit your re-render here. You go to interleaved, you hit your configure button. Um, and I'll just call this, I always just call it high-res 
bin, boom, it's going to pop up automatically at 5.1. Just go to binaural, click that, hit OK. Don't import it back into your into your mix. I always just send it to the same folder that I'm sending my ADMs. And um, then you just choose it. So if you go back here to, you'll make a new folder right here that says ADM BWF Masters Zinger. There you go. You open it up, you hit bounce, baby. That's it. Now it's bouncing down that. It's bouncing down your high res bin, and man, you're you're cooking with kerosene. That's it. That's all you got to do. So um, we're working real hard to make this available on the website. I I was gonna wait and put this out next week, but I thought, man, I've had so many people asking about it. It's it's, it's time, and I didn't want to hold back. This will give you what it does. It's gonna be available from bmgstudioa.com. I'll post that here at the end of the video so you can see and check it out, and I'll let you know. I'll I'll shoot out a short. When it's available, it should be this week. Uh, it'll definitely be out before Black Friday because um, we're going to make a good deal coming in. It's not going to be that expensive. And it's going to be something that's going to be continually updated. I'll come up with different things. And I've got a million of these that are, are this is my main one that I use every time. But I've got some I've changed for certain. I've set it up for different producers. Um, you know, Jay Joyce is one, Frank Rogers is another. This, you know, different guys are different things. So. I set it up, and that way I, I, it's easier to work with them. So, and I'll make it where you can change it for your own thing. So, there's a lot of different plugins out there besides Fab Filter, but they ain't any better. So, <laughs> I love Fab; it works great, and uh, that's my thing. So that's that's it, guys, for this week. Sorry, I was a little long-winded, but um, I hope that was helpful, and I hope that uh, explains more about my mastering template. Uh, again, shout out to to Lenny Wilson, all the BMG staff, Jelly Roll, everybody. Uh, what a week, man. Last week was just absolutely amazing. So thankful to be involved in just a teeny little way. But uh, God bless you guys and much more success. And and uh, let's go. Let's go to the Grammys. Let's do this. So um, anyways, have a blessed week. Have a blessed weekend. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell down below. And make sure you get notified for all of our upcoming episodes here at Enter the Atmosphere. No, no.